So today is gonna be an update on my brother's VR6 turbo project. Now has a Quake limited slip diff. Um, he has steel shift forks, he has the fourth gear support, he has ARP hardware for the gear that goes on the diff, and he has new bearings for the uh, differential shim kit. He got this plate which goes on the opposite side of this transmission. You have to drill holes through the casing and this just kind of cradles it together. And I've seen pictures of the casing and it cracks. This is supposed to stiffen it up. And the input shaft is another weakness of the O2M. And that's this one. He made this, it's a 20 millimeter uh, shaft. If you bought, and I even looked on McMaster car, if you bought a 20 mil 4140 shaft, I think it was like 25 bucks plus like eight or 10 bucks shipping. So it's not that much to get this, or I think it's called like bar tech tuning. I don't know, they're in Germany. They make these and uh, it's about 20 mil. It's like 19.95. You'll press that into the shaft and well, it makes it stiffer because there's another piece of material in there making this a solid piece of steel. <laughs> We got all these gears out. It wasn't too bad to take apart. It's gonna be a little tough to get it together. This is the open div, which is <laughs> kind of open. And that's the quaves. Ugh, do it to that one. No go? No. Nope. It don't work? No. Nope, Send it back? Yeah, it's Boston. Shoot! The input shaft in there with some aluminum foil. And what are we gonna heat this thing up to? 350? Now you need to turn it down as low as it'll go. Because you'll be roasting yourself. That is buried in the freezer. So hopefully that uh, works out. My brother and I have been crunching numbers on this input shaft. We have been measuring the inside diameter of this and he just uh, put that little cut in there for air. That was like last minute thing we thought of uh, like air escaping past. And now we're gonna press this thing in to hold this shaft from flexing. And we also have fourth gear support, which is right here, which is going to beef this thing up and keep it from flexing. So basically we got both and this is gonna like reinforce the shaft to the max because this is like a super weak point on this tranny. The gear is stripping out because of it flexing. We're gonna press this thing together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just roll so and yeah. cut a channel to let the air pass. Cause we would get like halfway down and the air would be like compressed and it wouldn't have anywhere to go. Oh, and the one yeah. they sell has that too, that little channel put in it. Alright guys, so the shaft pressed in super good into the input shaft. And now we're drilling. Where's our safety glasses? And six of you having a good old time with this little fan nah, necklace. Nah, nah. You see the Don't fan? Post that. <laughs> I ain't trying to get roasted. <laughs> and uh we're, we're doing it, so um, <laughs> Pete decided to bring his crap over here and we got to tap in an 8, uh, 827 MPT to his intake manifold. This is a boost sensor for the turbo project and so is this trans stuff, so we're over here getting it done. Whoa! Boost sensor is in and now you can read boost on your snaps. Miata. And that's for the snaps boost gauge, right? Yep. Just a eighth MPT and the aluminum intake manifold. Oh, it's and pretty tight. It's nice and straight. You look freaking good. Nice. All right guys, so we just got the pins all out. And then we're the heads, at least what's like remained. And right now we should be able to pull this diff right out of this gear set. And he went through this side, a lot of people go through the other side and he went through this side because 
he could go a little bit deeper and it would hit the diff and it wouldn't hit the gear. If you go through the other side and you go too much, then it'll hit the gear versus uh, the diff like on this side. So he was able to just like go for it and not have to worry about it. Oh, there you go. Is that gonna fall? Oh. Boom. All right, so here's the main shaft with the end pressed in. And we're still going to just barely tack this, but I'm not gonna get it too hot because that bearing's right there, obviously. But I still wanna tack this just to hold that piece in so it doesn't come out when we're driving it. Dude, this main shaft is gonna be so strong compared to stock. So we just got all of the bolts torqued that holds the ring gear on. What we did is put in each CV uh, stub axle and we got some 10 by 1.5s in the bottom of this vise right here. Two of them clamping it in place and then two on the top. And what I was doing was holding this in place. And obviously I got basically a leverage, like an arm on this, holding it in place and we just torqued these. It was uh, 54 newton meters, which is 40 foot pounds. And you can see my, my marks, my black dots. The inner ones were the first time, and then the outer ones were the second. And yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to put this in. We need to now make a sleeve to press on these bearings. These bearings are a 45 millimeter inside diameter. And when you press this on, you need to make sure that your sleeve will clear this outside diameter of um, the bearing surface right here, but it's not big enough to where it hits this cage for these rollers. I'm gonna use this to press the bearing on, and it fits like almost perfect. Good to go. I just gotta put one of these little blocks on top right there and press this bearing down. All right, that's it. We're in there. 